We want to thank you for coming here today for the Thanksgiving service for Donna Baino. And at this time, we are going to have some tributes. And the first one, I'm going to call on Mandisa Clark. Good afternoon, everyone. the praises to Christ our King. Slowly the name from in the book, the book read. I know the King, so there's no need, no need to dread. No And praise it to the great I am. We will live in the light of the reason land. See over there, there's a mansion that's prepared just for me where I live with my Savior eternally. No more nights, no more pain, no more tears, 
never crying again and praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the reason left. we will live in the light of the Let's say good evening to one and all. Donna, my sis. Losing a half sister can be an incredible, painful experience. Not only are half sisters close relatives, but they are also often a person first true friends and confidence. Many people grow up looking forward to extended family gatherings at least in part because they have an opportunity to visit with their half sisters cousins and so on it's so hard to say goodbye to a beloved half sister who passed away suddenly no opportunities to say goodbye or how much i appreciated our friendship and bond how much her love was conveyed in quiet, loving, thoughtful words. Oh, Dawns, heaven certainly has welcomed home an angel. You were my half-sister by blood, but you were my friend by choice. I will miss you forever. There's a hole in our family where you used to stand. There's a hole in my heart for which I never planned. I will miss you every day until we meet again. I am who I am because I was lucky enough to have you in my life, sis. Truly. Whenever Mommy says she has three children. 
she will always say two biological children and one adoptive child. And that was me. And that continued for almost 50 years. I want to thank God for Donna's life. We may not know, we cannot tell. But this evening we know with a bold assurance that Jesus is ours. Gone but not forgotten says, We love you, but Jesus loves you best. Sleep on, sleep on, sleep on. Thank you. Next, we're going to have a tribute from Sharon Burke. Sharon Burke here. Hi, good afternoon all. This is a tribute to my best friend, Miss Donald Caroline Bino, a wonderful mother. A wonderful mother, sister, aunt, niece, and friend. She was one of a kind, lovely lady. She was a very good friend to me from the time we were in private school. <laughs> from the time we were in primary school to the secondary school, and on to the real world. We remain, we remain friends for years. <laughs> she always had my back, as I had hers. Every time I traveled, she would always write a list of all kinds of chocolates, latest she wanted to try. Always wanted to try something new a sweet tooth she had. Sometimes far in between, I would occasionally pop in on her. And when I call, I would say, get in, let's go for a drive. Or she would just sit in my car and we would just talk about all kinds of things. I remember coming to her house for years. And if Bruce was there, he would always make a comment, and she would always say, don't mind me, and laugh. I'm always joking around, but don't care how serious I sound. She would always laugh and hit me. Her hands was fast. Many times she would call me and ask what local fruits I have, and I would say, are the plums or pomegranates? She would pass as she enters as she entered my house, she would always say, Mr. Burke, you good? And my father would always make smart comments, and she would laugh. Then I asked for everyone in the house, then head straight to the pipe. She knew what she wanted to do. She wanted to start eating fruits. She would send Zabri for his meds, but fruits, she came for them herself. We all were going to miss her so much. She was always there when I really needed her. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there for her, but God knows best. You were always remembered. She, may she rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Thank 
you. Our final tribute this evening is coming from Heather Skeet. church. Ready? I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will sing all the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Cause all my life you have been so, so. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing all the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkness nights. You are close like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. of God. Yes, put your hands together because no matter what we are going through, the goodness of God remains with us. We are going to have our final tribute from her godmother, Patrona Holder. The 
the goodness of God. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Good evening to the large Bino family, the Bournes, and all the others that are mixed up in between those two respected families of Christ Church East. Today is not an easy day for me. In fact, my goddaughter, Donna Carolyn Bino, is the third person associated with me that I have lost between last year, July, and January. To say that I am grieving is an understatement because I'm still in shock, definitely in shock. I remember when Marcy was pregnant with Donna. For some reason, she was just drawn to me. And I was 16 years old, I think, at the time. And she took my, my hand and placed it on her stomach. And she said, you want to be this little girl's godmother? And I said, yes. She said, but you confirmed, though? I said, yes. And that bond started within the womb until Donna passed away. And many people feel that being a godmother is only about giving presents and money at birthdays and Christmas and special holidays. Donna and I shared a special bond. I watched her, I held her at her christening. I was there for her confirmation. And there were three girls in home by my grandmother in the yard. It's Christy, a little girl that I raised, now a woman now, Lisa, Lisa Perch and Donna. And when Donna became pregnant with Xavier, to show how much respect Donna have, had for me and the love between the two of us was more than just Godmother and Goddaughter. She came to me and she said, she said, Godmother, I have something to tell you. I said, what's that? She said, I'm pregnant. And I held her because I believe that that young age, she wanted the assurance of that, of that other special person in her life. And I held her and I said, I am there with you 100%. And that association, as I said, continued. I looked out for her son, even though he don't know that I've been watching him, so that he will not get into any wrong and will not disrespect her. Donna was a beautiful person. She was beautiful inside and out. And whoever and wherever she was, and she introduced, saw me, she would always introduce me to the person as, this is my godmother. Amen. And for me, it meant the world to know that even growing up, that respect was still there. And to say that I'm going to miss her, I have, I have already started. I was there looking at, going over, the, looking at her in, the, in her, her casket to make sure that the casket memory is not the memory that I have of my beautiful, caring, kind goddaughter. And I want you all to remember Donna just as I remember her. Beautiful, that lovely smile I can't remember ever seeing her angry or upset. I want you to remember my goddaughter, and I'm saying my goddaughter in that way. So to her son, Bruce, all of the binos, as you would say, all of the biners who will be grieving, and the borns, and the friends, let's comfort each other and comfort Zavi and Bruce at this time. And may we always remember her in our prayers and the family in their prayers. Donna, rest in peace. Rest in peace, my sweet child. Rest in peace. Thank you.
please stand with me hallelujah amen hallelujah amen amen, amen. amen. I feel something I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he will stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gives. And the Lord what? The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, make me to know my end and the number of my days that I may certify how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were expand, and my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily I say unto thee, all man living is all together vanity hallelujah amen 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 hallelujah hallelujah we will have the first hymn will be directed by Pastor Henry, and I want you to do justice to these hymns this evening as we commend Donna lives or she life unto God. Amen, amen, and amen. Good afternoon. Our first hymn would be And Can It Be? should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Die he for me who causes faith for me.
Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have prayer by our minister weeks. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we just want to give you thanks. God, we just want to give you praise. We want to thank you, dear God, for the life, dear God, of Donna. And we pray this evening, dear God, that those who mourn, dear God, that they will be comforted. Because the word declares, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And this evening, God, we ask you that you would comfort their God, her son. God, you will comfort their father, all the family, all the friends, all the loved ones. You will be their comfort this evening. For God, you promised in your word, you will never leave us, nor you will never forsake us. So even, dear God, in this sad time, we know, dear God, that you are with us. And under us are your everlasting arms. For God, you promise, dear God, that you're going to keep your hands under us. When we go through the waters, when we go through all the situations in life, God, you promise that you would never leave us. So we thank you, dear God, for the assurance this evening that you are with us, dear God, even in this time. We ask you this evening, dear God, that as your word go forward, we pray, God, that, dear Father, as it go forward, dear God, someone who do not know you, dear God, as Lord and Savior, they will come to experience you as Lord and Savior. Knowing, dear God, as we have to look, at each and every one of us have to pass this way. But, God, we do not know the time nor the hour. So help us, God, to be prepared. Be prepared, dear God, because you said that you're going to come, dear God, maybe in the midnight hour. Whatever you come this evening, God, let our lives, dear God, be prepared to meet you. So we ask you this evening, dear God, for strength. We ask you again, dear God, that you will comfort us. Comfort us, God. We ask you this evening, dear God, but by your reign of your presence, God. God, this evening, let us give you the thanks. Let us give you the praise because, dear God, you deserve it. No matter what we go through, God, you deserve the praise. So this evening, we just want to give you praise. We just want to give you thanks. God, we just want to give you honor. For we declare this evening, you are a wonderful God. God, we just bless you. We just give you praise. In Jesus' name, thanksgiving. Amen. As we continue to celebrate the life of our Donna, we're going to have the script, first scripture reading, and it will be taken from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through to 9. Isaiah chapter 25. Verses 6 through to 9. As you remain standing. Good evening to all. Reading. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts be unto all people a feast of fat things a feast of wines on the things, of fat things, full of marrow of wine, on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering, cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God shall <laughs> and
and the Lord God shall wipe away all tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all of the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord we have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the reading. At this moment, we're going to have the eulogy by Marilyn Turton Ross. Good afternoon, everyone. We are here to say goodbye to Donna Carolyn by now. All our life we had been we had been two sets of footprints in the sand. Jesus' footprints are mine. During my darkest days, I only saw one. I asked Jesus, Where were your darkest days? Jesus said, My child, I was right there with you. It was during your darkest days that I carry you. We are here to remember Donna Carolyn by now. Born on the 22nd of November, 1972, to the late Marcy Tabina and Magdalene Small. She attended the St. Christopher Girls and the Princess Margaret Secondary. During Donna days, she got involved in brownies. During her school days, she got involved in brownies, girl guys. She also became the deputy head girl at the Princess Margaret School. Donna continued to study in information technology. She later went on to work at the Pandora's Video and Beauty Ascension. While she met Miss Lord, her second mom, Donna had one son, Xavier. She loved him dearly. She also loved her family and friends. She's, a, she, she's never a person to get in conflict. She was a very peaceful person. Donna had an impeccable style. She loved to look good and smell sweet. She was very elegant dresser. Donna loved to laugh and travel. She also had the most beautiful smile on her face. Donna was a helpful soul. She was always willing to run errors for Mr. Altram, her aunt Evadne, or her cousin Rosalind. Kelly and I had a discussion about Donna. Kelly said, Auntie, that girl does leave home on mornings. Where you answer where she going? Her reply is, none of your business. She had a great love for chocolate. It could be dark, white, brown, or even expired. As long as it was chocolate, she loved it. She was an angel, the one God wanted. As the songwriter said, we never know. Today would be her alas. Rest in peace, Donna, until we meet again. At this time, we're going to have our second scripture reading, and it will be taken from St. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and it be read to us by Kim Turton, as we all stand.
Good afternoon, everyone. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it would not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place before you. And before I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. You may go and know the way I go. Thomas said unto him, Lord, Lord, we know not where you goes, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh before me except the Father. Here ends the reading. Thank you. You may take your seats. We'll now have a tribute by Rosalind Bino. Tribute. Blessed good evening to everyone. Donna's life was a blessing, her memory a treasure. She was loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. I wrote this tribute for Donna's home going, not to bring me sadness, but to reflect on the beautiful person Donna was and the wonderful memories we've shared together. This is not an easy task because it's painful, but I pray for strength and courage. Philippians 4, 13 reminded me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Donna was beautiful inside and out. She was not only my cousin, she was like a daughter, a best friend, not to mention she took care of all my banking needs. There was nothing I asked Donna to do for me that wasn't done in a timely manner. What I admire mostly about Donna was her attributes. She was loyal, dependable, reliable, and very trustworthy. I never had to worry about my funds. Donna kept record of everything. Donna and I had a bond that could never be measured. One of the great things we had in common was we both loved to laugh. I always spoke about Donna to everyone, referring to her as my little cousin. I remember a couple years ago, I came home in November to celebrate Jenny and Donna's birthday, as I normally do every year, because they are both November borns. On the night of the birthday, while having dinner with some friends, I happened to mention something about my little cousin, referring to Donna. Well, let me tell you all, she put me in my place that night. She said, cuz, as she always calls me, with a big smile on her face, you always call me your little cousin. Do you know how old I am? And she reminded me of her age. I replied, little girl, I never said you were my young or my old cousin. I said you were my little cousin, and that's who you are. We all had a big laugh as we all thought it was funny. She always had to come back with a smile. She was a feisty little thing. I love me some Donna and will surely miss her. In November of last year, I came home again to celebrate with the two birthday girls. After having lunch at the hotel with some friends, Donna said to me later that afternoon, cause with a smile, you always coming home on Jay's, as she always called Jenny's birthday, and celebrate mine. So next year, (laughs) 
You should come home for my birthday and include Jay. I looked at her politely and said, yes, boss. We both bust out laughing. Donna had a great sense of humor and a smile that lightens up the room whenever she enters. I've not been home for Christmas in a long time, so my hubby and I decided to surprise them all and show up for Christmas. On Boxing Day, Donna joined us at Jenny's house for dinner along with some other friends. Donna came in looking cute as usual with that great big smile. She did not hesitate. Right away, she took up the role of the hostess. She immediately started asking everyone whose dinner is next to be heated up. She was like a busy little bee in the kitchen. We all ate, drank, and enjoyed a wonderful evening together. As the evening came to a close, Donna accompanied me, my hubby, and our dear friend, Miss Betty, to our apartment where she collected her Christmas gifts. We then walked her to the bus stop because I didn't want her to be on the road too late. She then called to let us know she reached home safely. On Wednesday the 28th, Donna called to wish us a safe trip back on Thursday. As usual, I call upon arrival to let everybody know, including Donna, we reached home safely. Donna was always very concerned about me and would message or call me to check on me. Donna and I spoke on January 1st to wish, wish, wish each other a happy new year. Again, laughing, Donna said, see you on my birthday in November, cuz. I laughed and said, sure thing. Donna called me again on Monday the 2nd to let me know. She was going to town on Tuesday the 3rd and would be taking care of some business for me. I said, okay, and please be safe. Donna called me later that Tuesday to let me know she was back home. While speaking with Donna, I received another phone call. I said to Donna, I will call her back later. She said, okay, cuz. I did not know that that's the last time that I would have heard Donna or seen her other than like this. I did not think it was that important to call her back right away, not knowing that was the last time I would see or hear her. Heather and Jenny calls me every morning religiously. In the morning, on, the, on Thursday the, the 5th, I got a call from Heather and she was crying. And I, she was crying aloud and asking me, Roz, did you hear? Did you hear? I said, heard what? And then she said about Donna, my whole body went numb. I hung up the phone and I called, I think, I'm not sure it was either Xavier or Bruce. With a loud cry, all I heard was, she's gone. I lost it right away. I started screaming, stamping, and banging the wall so hard. My tenants called upstairs to see was I okay. All I remember saying was, no, 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 and calling Donna's name aloud. The next thing I know there was, there was the police, the fire truck, and the ambulance banging on my door asking me to please come, to go, come and go to the hospital to be checked out. But I refused. I believe they knew what, was, what had happened because they expressed condolences. I think it could have been my daughter or my granddaughter that informed them. They were very nice and stayed with me until I was calm enough to be left alone. Friends, family, and loved ones. Life is too short. We are here today and gone tomorrow. Let's get rid of all the clutter in our hearts. 
ask God to remove all the unforgiveness, the hatred, and the pettiness. Take time each day to let your loved ones know how much you love and appreciate them because it may be the last time that you ever see or hear them. I will cherish the good times Donna and I had together until we meet again. May her soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Thanks for all your prayers, calls, messages, and support during this most difficult time. Let us all stand as we continue to give honor, blessings, and celebration for the life of Donna. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That will be our next hymn. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We will start with the chorus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship is holy.
worship you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will now have the address by your Apostle Lloyd Henry. You may take your seats at this time. Let me say that again. God's eternal goodness. Hallelujah. Humanity um, has been promised by Almighty God. 70 years, 70 years to live. And if by reason of strength, there be four score years, yet is the strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and fly away. The psalmist David said, the days of our years are three score years and ten. And in that promise, none of us can say, with any assurance that we will live such a time. 
And so because of that, nobody is certain as to how long they will live. The psalmist says, teach me to number our days. Amen? That we may want apply our hearts to wisdom. The portion of scripture from Isaiah 25, which Jenny seemingly read. Isaiah, to my mind, had an experience with the Lord. I don't know if you can find the text that she read. And God sees his goodness. Amen. He sees his goodness. He said, oh, Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast wonderful things. Thou hast done wonderful things. Thou counsel of all are faithful and true. Is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in this chapter, in this chapter, he speaks of God's goodness. How God has been able be, the, 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 it, it was able to strengthen the poor. That's what this chapter says. He was able to feed the needy in distress. And of course, to form a refuge from the storm and a shadow from the heat. Isaiah shows God's protection. He will swallow up that. Amen. He will swallow up that in victory. My God. He will swallow up. And the Lord will all will wipe away, hallelujah, all tears from their faces. Revelation 21:4 says. And God, and God shall wipe away all fears from their eyes, and there shall be no more, no more death. Neither sorrows, those things are over. No crying, neither shall there be any more pains. For the former things are passed away. Behold, he made all things new. Man has an appointment with death. Man does not have to fear death once he is in Christ Jesus. He cannot cancel the appointment. You know that? He cannot postpone the appointment. It is appointment that he must keep. Amen. And so the appointment that Donna has with that, she has kept it. And we too, ourselves, must keep the appointment. Isaiah made the point in verse 8, the latter part of the verse. And the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from all the earth for what the Lord has spoken it. When God speaks, amen, he will spoken. And it shall be in that day, law is our God. We have waited. We have waited for him. And who will save us? I want to challenge you this evening in my very short discourse. The goodness of God, the Bible says, leadeth us to repentance. In other words, in other portions of the scripture, which we have read, 
We have read John 14. Uh, it was read to us. We hear the Savior saying, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house. There are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, if I go, I will come again. Amen? To receive you unto myself. But I, I, I'm saying it, it, something that is true. But the people sound very quiet. So, is, is it not true? Huh? Is it not true? He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. You believe that? And if I go, amen, I will come again. He speaks of his resurrection. When all those who are in the grave shall hear his voice, hallelujah. John chapter 25 of verse 5 says to us, chapter 5 of verse 25, Verily I say unto you, the hour, hallelujah, the hour is coming, that is it, when we shall hear the voice of God. When we shall hear the Son of God, they that have heard his voice shall live. They that have heard his voice shall live. Minister Abraham, let me recognize you. This, I, I believe that is why I didn't recognize you, why you are quiet. <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to... I'm, I, I recognize you. Amen? And all the dignitaries in the church. Amen? I wouldn't have time for all of that. And the Bible says, Blessed are those who take part in the first resurrection. Amen? Blessed are the holy in the Lord had part in the first resurrection on such the second death had no power. I believe my, all my heart that this is so. I believe based on what I have I've heard and you have heard, Donna will rise again. I said Donna will rise again. And if you are looking forward for the resurrection, we too will rise again. The scriptures say that you should not be fearful. You should not have any fear. But let me ask you one question. If you know Donna's well, and the Bible says, and the unbelieving, the abominable, and the murderer, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and idolaters, and all that shall have part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, with, which is the second death. Would you classify her this evening? I'm asking a question. Would you think that she was unbelievable? Unbelieving. Would you think that she was abominable? Would you think that she was murderer? She was homama, homanda, sorcerer, and idolaters. Huh? And if that was not the case, she promised a resurrection in Christ Jesus. She promised a resurrection. And so, all of us who live faithful and true in Jesus Christ this afternoon will promise our resurrection. I trust and hope today 
that something that has been said, oh God, this afternoon will touch the hearts on the life of the people of God. And they will make right. Amen? If you are interested in the resurrection to life, you will make right in the presence of the Lord this afternoon. It's a golden opportunity. Amen? Pertinent opportunity. And you can rest assured this afternoon you will be resurrected. I have known the, the family of the Bino for a long, a long time. 40 something years. And I have had relationship with some of the family members. I, I recall, Bruce, where are you? Outside. He and I developed a good relationship, even Selvin and others whom I have known. According to the testimony of Donna, I believe that she lived a credible life. Amen? And I believe that such a person, God, will have mercy on her. It is from the pulpit of the CHC Gates of Praise with sadness I extend my deepest sympathy to the entire family. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. We have been talking about the resurrection. And, and, and I believe that if we have been talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that she will rise. She will rise. She will rise to be with the Lord. She will rise. You will rise. I then agree and realize that many people here don't believe in the resurrection. And maybe that's why you're not ex excited. But if you know what the resurrection means, it means life from the dead. Amen? Uh, but why are you so quiet? You, you worried about Donna? She she is with the Lord. And I want to, to, to celebrate. Let me, let, let me alone celebrate. Hey! Hey! My God! Hey! My spirit, I will. Your spirit. 
to be taken. But I, 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 I nearly got carried away. Jenny, if you were with the leaders in the office, who were with the leaders, the family? Kelly? Where's Kelly? Oh my God. They requested an offering and before you will sing your favorite song you know what it, that is? You know what that is? Hear my cry. Hear my cry. I want the ashes to come. Hear my cry, O oh Lord, attend unto my way. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. My heart is overwhelmed. Let me tell you something, man. You can get up and dance. Hey, 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 hey.
Father, we thank thee for this evening. We thank thee for this service. We thank thee for the hearers of your word. We thank thee for all those who came to pay their last respect. We pray in the name of Jesus that thou will help us, oh God, help us to live that exemplary life that we have heard that Donna live. We pray in the name of Jesus that thou will seal us with thy love. Bless us together as we go to the cemetery. My God, may your heart, your heart, the hearts of the people will be wanted today. Wanted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We thank thee for everything. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Continue. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, will I cry unto thee? And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I.
But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. My friends, whereas death had once more invaded our ranks and removed from the walks of life our beloved sister, her soul having departed to dwell in the undiscovered country from whose no travelers return. It has become our sad duty to commit her body to the grave, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and our inspiring privilege to commend her soul to our maker, father, and redeemer. In the confident hope of the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the body from the grave and the joyous life reserved for the children of glory.
and keep thee. The Lord makes his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.